Okay, so over there, that's my friend Alana. My name's Amalia. I know our names are similar, but we are very different people. She's quiet and tall. I'm short and loud, etc. It's like yin and yang over here. She's my best friend. Anyway, the story I'm going to tell you today is about Mike Lancho Bonarate, who many of you know because a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle was named after him. But in real history, he was a sculptor turned painter, and uh, he got, like, really popular as a sculptor, but then Pope Julius II, who I like to call Balls Out Jewels, uh, because of these following reasons. Uh, back at the time, the Pope was in charge of, like, a military culture. Like, he had papal states and an army, and they were trying to, like, conquer more parts of Italy to be part of the papal states that the Pope controlled militarily. It's not like today when the Pope is just like, hey, I'm a random guy who thinks abortion is wrong. You know, it's... No, it was different. He was, like, a fucking military leader, right? So, like, he had a whole army of people and all these papal states, and, like, he's trying to conquer everybody, and, like, it's crazy, because, like, you know, you don't think of the Pope as being, like, having an army. But at the time, in the Renaissance, the Pope had his own fucking army. I call this guy Pope... Pope Julius II, I call him Balls Out Jewels because... He did all sorts of crazy things. Like, for instance, the cardinals refused to follow him over a mountain, and he started beating them with his cane, and he's, like, literally in his 70s, and he's like, you won't follow me over this mountain? Rah! I'm going to hit you with my cane until you follow me over this mountain. And then he also enslaved Michelangelo. Like, Michelangelo's from Florence, the Pope is in Rome, and he basically gets Michelangelo to come there, and he's like, you're going to paint the Sistine Chapel ceiling. And Michelangelo's like, I thought you wanted me to sculpt your tomb. And then Pope Julius II's like, no, I'm balls out jewels. You're not sculpting my tomb. You're going to paint the Sistine Chapel ceiling. And Michelangelo's like, I don't know how to paint. And he's like, well, you're going to do it anyway. And I'm like, ah, what the fuck? You know, like, I'm sure Michelangelo was also like, ah, what the fuck? So, anyway, he gets his friend Girl and Dio to come in and teach him to do, a fresco, to do a fresco, like, real quick. Like, how do I do a fresco? Okay, here's how. And then Michelangelo is like, ah, uh, I guess I gotta paint this fucking ceiling, because, like, the Pope is threatening to kill me if I don't. So, he starts to paint the ceiling, and then he runs away to Florence and hides in the Medici chapel, which is like a tomb, and the Pope's goons track him down and drag him back to Rome to finish the Sistine Chapel ceiling. I am not kidding. There is a movie about this called The Agony and the Ecstasy. The only truthful thing about this movie, the only thing the movie gets right, is that Michelangelo and Pope Julius II had a terrible relationship, and that Pope Julius II enslaved him. Like, he didn't pay him for doing the Sistine Chapel ceiling. He kept him a prisoner. Like, Pope Julius II was not a nice guy. That's why I call him Balls Out Jewels, because, I mean... Drunk with power. He was drunk with power, exactly. As Alana just stated, he was drunk with power. So, anyway, Michelangelo finished this entire fucking ceiling in two years. You can tell that he gets better at fresco as he goes along. Because, like, the first panels he does, they're kind of, like, shitty. And then, like, the second panel's a little better, the third panel's a little better. And by the time he gets to God, he did it backwards. So he gets to God creating, like, the sun and the moon at the end. And you can tell he's a much better fresco painter by that time. Michelangelo's a weird one, though, because he was totally gay. And anytime you look at a picture that he did of a woman, or of a sculpture he did of a woman, it looks like a man with, like, rotten fruit on their chest. Like, he did not know, like, it's obvious that he knew what naked women looked like, because he had seen, like, other painters, like, Botticelli knows how to paint a naked woman, right? So he'd seen that, and he's just like, I don't even give a shit. 
I'm not painting a naked woman. I'm going to paint a naked man and put rotten fruit on their chest because I hate women. Oh, he didn't hate women, but he wasn't attracted to them. He had, like, multiple friends who were women, but, like, he was not like, ah, women are so hot, you know. He was like, ah, men are hot, and I don't want to sculpt a woman's body, so I'm going to... You know, like, you should look at uh, Dusk and Dawn at the Medici Chapel, if you want to see an example of this, or Night and Day at the Medici Chapel, because literally these wi these women that he was supposed to be doing, like, they look like men with rotten fruit on their chest. Like, he, and, like, no penis. And I'm like, Michelangelo, I know you know what a naked woman looks like because you've seen other Renaissance art, but he did not give two shits. He did not give two shits about that. He was like, I only sculpt men, because that's what I'm attracted to. And then, like, there's other crazy stories of Michelangelo, like, for instance, when he did the David, uh, which is a very famous Michelangelo sculpture that you've probably seen, you know, David as, he's like, has the sling, and he's about to kill Goliath, blah, 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 and he was so crazy, Michelangelo is completely insane, he's like talking to his sculpture, and at one point he takes a sledgehammer and tries to smash it, and all of his assistants hold him down until he agrees not to smash the sculpture. He would also talk to the David, and when he sanded the marble, he did not use sandpaper, he would put sand in his hand and start doing this. And his hands would start bleeding everywhere. And he would get blood all over the sculpture. And then the assistants had to wash off the blood. Like, this guy is fucking insane. Like, nobody is crazier than Michelangelo, except maybe Caravaggio, which will be... That's a different video. But, anyway, so Michelangelo got enslaved to do the Sistine Chapel. And then when Pope Julius II dies, he's all like, oh, thank God. No more fucking enslaving by the Pope. No. Wrong. Wrong. Pope Leo X, the next Pope, enslaves him to do the fucking judgment picture on the other, on the wall of the Sistine Chapel. And Michelangelo's like, fuck, not again. Now I have to do this again? I'm not a painter. I'm a sculptor. Why are you asking me to do so many paintings? And, like, they made him do the last judgment in the Sistine Chapel, Leo X, who was the Medici Pope, he also did weird things like when he was inaugurated as Pope, he had them paint gold paint all over a 10-year-old boy and give him wings so he could walk around. And then that 10-year-old boy died of poisoning because the gold paint was poisonous. And then Leo X's like, oh, whatever. You know, I'm like... These popes have no morals. In the Renaissance, the popes have no morals. Like, they're committing wars. They're telling the Spanish it's okay to kick out all the Jews. They're saying the Spanish, oh, yeah, you can have an Inquisition, blah, blah, blah. We don't care. We're just the popes. Not supposed to be the most moral person in the world, you know? Crazy pope shit. Crazy pope shit. Crazy pope shit. Like, there's so many crazy popes in the Renaissance. Leo X and Pope Julius II, balls out jewels are my completely my two favorites because they did so many crazy things. Leo X was the one who commissioned the most things from Raphael, who, if you know the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, is the one with the red bandana. But in reality, they should have switched the names of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because Donatello was the oldest, so he should have been the leader. Michelangelo was the asshole, so he should have been Raphael. Raphael was the drunk, so he should have been Michelangelo, and Leonardo was the genius with machines, so he should have been Donatello. So, in reality, don't listen to the Teenage Ninja Turtles. They don't know what they're talking about. They should have switched all those names up, and it would have made sense historically. Um... Also, Michelangelo did not lie on his back and, like, paint like this on scaffolding. He would stand upright and paint like this. And it hurt his back really bad. So, I don't know why he did that, but that is apparently what he did. Also, recently, they were going through, 
like fucking like correspondence that was locked in the Vatican vault and they found love letters between Michelangelo and another man. So we know he is fucking gay and I would be his fag hag any day of the week because I like to draw and I would be like, hey, Michelangelo, look at this drawing I did. And he'd be like, that sucks. You suck. And I'd be like, come on, Michelangelo, like, come to the club with me or, you know, I'll, I'll dress you as a girl or something. You know, like, you know I'm good at drawing. Look at my drawings. And he's like, no, your drawings suck. My drawings are better. This is my imagination of my conversation with Michelangelo. It's not, that didn't actually happen. Um, Raphael was straight. Uh, he had sex with, like, hundreds of women. Okay, end of transmission.